What's up, YouTube? How are you guys doing tonight? I'm here about to put the up arrow on the Camaro with Miss September. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen that I have been running a two-bar map sensor for about the last two years or so. One of the problems that we had at the racetrack the other day was I hit my boost cut, which was set to 14 pounds, uh, by about 1,000 foot. So, I had some help in fixing this. Enter Motion Raceworks and Low Dollar Motorsports. The nice phone answerer guy at Motion named Brock with the awesome mullet told me that I should upgrade to something like this, an eighth inch NPT pressure sensor. And then my friend Steve over at Warden Motorsports sent me, sponsor, whatever, this low dollar motorsports three bar map sensor. So now I don't have to have a mild party at 14 pounds. I can have all the party at 28 pounds. So the way that I did this Got the bulkhead here, right? Plugs and all the other fittings. I'll when I buy some more quarter-inch push lock hose, I'll run it to the blow-off valve and fuel pressure regulator. So those are eighth-inch NPT. This is quarter-inch NPT. And you've got a little dude like this, right? It's gonna go in the top there once I get it mounted to the firewall. Just because you guys love the freedom as much as I do we do a quick pan shot so what Brock told me to do when I called him is tap the stock sensor hole for the stock like one bar whatever bullshit map sensor you have tap that out with quarter inch tap got it from Amazon for like eight dollars with a drill bit tap it out run that quarter inch NPT to quarter inch push lock hose. I'm going to get the intake back in the car and get the rest of the up arrow mod completed. Once you get that fitting put in place in the back of the intake, then go ahead and mount your distribution block. I prefer Motion. They make great stuff. I'm friends with Doug and Andy and uh, Tyler and Brock and all them, all them boys. <clears throat> so I, I just like to support my friends and their businesses. But you know, you could probably find whatever on, you know, from Wu Wu Chang China or whatever the fuck on eBay or Amazon or whatever. But go ahead, and mount that too. I put it on the fire, well, on the cowl by the firewall. But put it wherever, and then uh, you just. It's, it's real easy. You just shove that hose into the fitting and it, it can't come out. Um, if you do want it to, you just push in and pull it pull the hose out. But just too simple. Thread, thread your sensor into the block and uh, you're good to go. Last thing is to go and change the tune up from two bar to three bar and rescale everything to match. Okay, so where we left off, the hard parts are installed on the car and we have to go and change the tune. So the first thing I go and I went and did is I changed the sensor itself in the Terminator software. I could have selected Holly 3 bar. The scaling didn't come out quite perfect compared to what Brandon puts with his sensors. If you buy the sensors, it comes with it. If you have a brain fart and you threw it out, you can get them easily on his web page. But I just entered in the data exactly like it was on his little sheet. Then, once I was done in sensors, I went to fuel and I rebuilt my base fuel table from scratch. I went off of some guidelines from the real tuners class that I took from Scott Clark and got it a baseline. It should be pretty close and we'll let the learn and the closed loop fix the rest of it. But I edited 
the map data on the one axis and I also bumped up to 8,000 RPM on the table from 7,000. One of the other things that I saw in the data logs when I went racing is that I shifted the car at 6,900 RPM because it was still pulling. There was an issue with that in that the car would have kept running, it just would have ran off the table using the last known fuel and spark numbers from that table. The other problem is that my rev limiter was set to 7,000. We'll get to that in a minute. So I rescaled the RPM axis from 500 to 8,000, and each one is a nice little 250 RPM increment. After I did that, I went to target air fuel ratio. You have to make sure that you adjust this table. Again, negative 14 and a half PSI to 29 pounds and 500 to 8,000 RPM. Once I'm done in the fuel, I go to the system parameters and I make sure that the map sensor it, scale is correct. Negative 14 to 29. Again, exactly like the little sheet that is nothing more than a screenshot of this exact same Holly software that Brandon puts in his package with all of this. Make sure that's... Now, onto the spark table. Again, I rebuilt this based off what I learned taking Scott's class. But the very first thing I did was I hit copy fuel axis. It will import from your fuel table and populate your map and RPM axes. I rescaled all the data that's in the cells based off of what, I, what Scott taught me. The very next thing that I did is I went in here to the rev limiter and my main rev limiter, I bumped that from 7,000 to 7,500. Even though that has nothing to do with the map sensor, I just changed it for peace of mind while I'm already in here making changes. Once we're done with Spark, I moved on to the boost table. I left almost everything alone. However, I changed the safety setups from my boost above, so the, the highest boost that the car will see before it cuts the ignition, I'm changed from 14 to 20. As I progress with testing in this car and this combination, I will bump those up. But for now, we're just going to keep it there. And then my boost above pressure for time is now set to, to 18 degrees. And if it goes up, if it goes above 18 pounds. For longer than a second, it will revert to wastegate, which is a four pound spring. So in theory, if I'm boost creeping from 17 to 18, and then it hits 19 gradually, it will revert to the wastegate, and it should fall on its face before hitting 20, unless it is rising super fast. The last thing that I changed is in one of my advanced tables, which I have set to be a timing offset based on ethanol content. This is loosely based on what a stock Silverado, Tahoe, whatever would do with flex fuel. It adds a bit of timing to the base. I again just rescale this to the 29 pounds based off what Brandon includes as the instructions. Read the instructions. All right guys, so you just saw the hard parts get installed. You saw the adjustments in the tune, it, it's really not that hard. It's hands down better than HP tuners. Ace, stop dicking around with HP tuners. All right, just throw the holly on your, your probe, or is it a, a Sunfire, Cavalier? Uh, I, they all look the same. Whatever. Stop with HP tuners. Switch to holly. Life's great. With that being said, hope you guys like my Richard Holder Holdner outro, and be good people, wash your hands. That's it. Good night.